of year, man. Today we have a new episode in the. <laughs> um, we'll talk about some random stuff, and um, I'm kind of continuing from the last video I did. I featured this channel before in the last video, and I'm just so impressed by this artist's workload or work capacity because. Now for this channel, I think this guy or chick or this person is, I think, recording these videos from Twitch streams from different artists. So I will link this channel again in the description below. But for this artist specifically named EO58, it's just so fascinating seeing like this artist will try to fill up like a page of uh different characters and almost always kind of render them to some extent i'm guessing there's kind of a maximum recording time like this fellow this channel is kind of limiting it to about two hours more or less or maybe that's because that's how the the stream of that person usually goes the actual artist but it doesn't change the fact like look at the amount of work it takes to fill up a page that's kind of rendered or mostly rendered and uh, most of these are character designs which are cool and yeah i'm not exactly sure if this person is if, if, if the, the artist has references on the side or whatever or if this is all from imagination maybe just uh memory right or maybe this person has a strong visual library to an extent i'm just so impressed like this whole like for this whole three rows of videos this is basically an entire day like 24 hours straight of drawing sketching painting it takes a lot of work like i, I don't know how this guy does it and maybe that's that, that ought to be the the topic for this episode because for this a video like how do you increase your work capacity um and i think we go or whenever whenever we try to work i think or for me anyway I, I kind of go into this mentality of either or like black and white extremes if i can't do it the right way i'd rather just not do it and i think that that's a very damaging way of approaching any kind of endeavor or pursuit and i found the idea of increasing your work capacity from this youtuber i forgot the name but he's a, a natural bodybuilder and he talks about like he like one of the factors he considers in his training regimen is trying to increase he, his work capacity. Basically, you just want to stick to something like stick stick to some kind of routine, and you want to get used to that kind of workload. Like your body has to get used to some kind of physical um, stress, and if you can get used to that. It's easier for you to kind of up the gains or increase your weight, do harder exercises. Um, but before you can really go into that level where you see some noticeable gains, you do have to stick, uh, like stick it out. Like that whole process of trying to get used to that really heavy or mostly kind of like a strong workload. Like you need to, to develop that endurance for that kind of work capacity. So maybe the, uh, instead of trying to uh, think of like finishing like a project, uh, finishing a mini project or some kind of portfolio piece. I mean, you can aim for that, but I think oftentimes that can drag on and on and on and you can't really somewhat or somehow finish that project. And I think it's because you're not training yourself to get good at the process of, you know, creating art. So I think instead of focusing on, you know, trying to learn, say, human anatomy, you want to get used to, or whatever subject, you want to get used to maybe trying to just stick to some kind of time limit. And I think Anthony Jones mentioned this in a few of his streams. I think it's, his channel is called Robot Pencil. I'll, I'll link it in the description below, but sometimes he does mention it. Just time yourself. Um, we don't, I, I think he mentioned how you don't really necessarily have to finish or you can try to finish something, but painting something for an hour, two hours, whatever, like you don't have to take that long. I think it's good to be more of a, to keep it short and get used to that kind of time blocks where it's not that long, especially if you're trying to get used to 
increasing your work capacity. Because if you're not even that used to drawing for like 30 minutes a day, more or less, then doing like three hour sessions for your um, renderings, paintings or project, I think it's just going to be too much for you. Yeah, I think it's better to just shift your goals, I guess, to to getting used to doing the thing, but in a shorter period of time. And as you get used to that, as you, do, as you develop a habit of doing that, I think naturally you're going to want to increase your time. And I saw this again from a different or a similar concept from a, a different fitness channel. I forgot the name again, but it mentions how you have to shit like uh fuck there's a typical advice you hear in the fitness community when it comes to making progress with your gains and what he did was he kind of flipped the concept i think typically what you want to do is to increase your strength you increase the weights or you increase the stress somehow either through weights or either through the difficulty of the exercise right in this case we'll try to stick to weights um, I think that's typically the, the basic advice. If, if you want to get stronger, bigger, you want to increase the weights. Now for him, what he mentioned or his perspective is you actually want to flip it instead. And instead of trying to increase the weight to get stronger, you want to get stronger to increase the weight. Now I know it seems kind of confusing, but basically like you want to stick to a certain weight to a point where your body wants to naturally move up where it's not satisfied or it's not being challenged anymore in, in any way. So you almost have this natural hunger for a, a more difficult, a more challenging level, I mean, a level up, I guess. So you want to keep that kind of perspective because I think it's more natural. And I think because in, in my own kind of training, I was able to uh, increase like a... a, a like a solid weight. I won't tell you <laughs> how, how like my level, but because it's kind of like, ugh. or I'm not where I want to be. I'll say that. <laughs> but I'm very, I'm very happy with my progress because I can see the shift or I can see my progress, obviously, but I understand what took or what it took for me to get to where I am. And basically I just stuck to the same kind of exercise and uh, pretty much almost every day or every other day and I just naturally got stronger in that thing so you don't really have to try you just want to stick through that something so when it comes to working or increasing or getting stronger or getting better at your work capacity I think it's more about trying to stick to um like you have to stick to it you have to be consistent and you want to keep it kind of manageable simple not too hard within uh a level that you can take almost every day and then just stick to it even if you feel like you can do more i don't recommend you do more because the next day you're going to get pretty much burned out and i think that's kind of the, the negative emotion or feeling you have to face you need to learn how to stop and make your number one priority sticking to that short limited period of time of in this case drawing or sketching so maybe if it's an hour a day, keep it to one hour a day and just keep sticking to that routine or, or at least make that your bare minimum. And then over time, you will naturally don't wait or sorry, don't try to force it. Uh, just stick to something manageable. And then over time, you will if you get better at it, if you stick to it, I think you will naturally increase your work capacity. And that's kind of what I want to do. Uh, just being inspired, being inspired by this uh, EO58 artist person, it's uh, pretty impressive. I want to be able to fill like a sketchbook, like an entire pages. It's kind of like Kim Jong-gi, RIP. I love his work. Um, I love how he can fill uh, entire pages of, um, of his sketchbooks with drawings, sketches, paintings, renderings, and how dynamic they are. Um, how full and lively they are and um, obviously I'm also fascinated by the the amount of like character concepts here some of them are more still or like um like a uh, kind of just standing some are kind of sexy poses pretty close to NSFW types some are more like comic-y with like call outs and stuff 
again i do recommend you check out the actual artist i think i'll, I'll also link the, the the twitch channel of eo58 so maybe you're kind of struggling with sticking to some kind of routine for your art um i know i have been struggling with trying to maintain and create some kind of schedule or routine or routine um and it's nice like seeing imagine being able to, to do this almost um every day it's nice especially if you if you really want to kind of get not kind of but if you really want to get good at this kind of thing if you need this dedication you need to be able to increase or work in this capacity doing the this amount of work within this amount of time so yeah i do recommend also finding an artist that you want to emulate for me right now i think it's eo58 in terms of like this uh like the the art session the art session process from the this the, the line work to the full finished kind of coloring phase and obviously i also want to emulate like the the work time obviously this guy or this chick is going to be way faster because of the uh, the experience is going to be there so that there's that but so i i, th I, th I guess that's it hopefully i've helped you in some way <laughs> talked about i think we talked about work capacity and such and how to increase it obviously I, I have to do this myself instead of just talking out of my um yes yeah oh, oh by the way that's feature one artist uh, i found this guy on on instagram but i think I've seen this guy on ArtStation as well. Oh, by the way, I'm using Yandex for my search engine. It's a Russian platform or, uh, yeah, a web browser. Um, so I'm not sure how to set the default to, or should not web browser, but I'm using the search engine Yandex, but not exactly the, uh, the browser itself. Um, so sometimes it converts things to Russian. I'm not a fan of that. Obviously, because I can't speak and understand Russian. Yeah, I'm not sure how to change the setting. Anyway, I like this guy's work. Um, heavy on the concept art. Um, I used to be, to, I, I, I mean, I still am into concept art, but it does have a lot of, a lot of design heavy kind of concepts. And as much as it's cool, I don't think it's my lane. I mean, we all do some kind of uh, level of concept art, but for games, for films, um, it used to be like a big thing for me. Or it really kind of pulled me into, you know, the idea of entertainment design and such. But um, I think I'm gonna, I'm just not really into like working in the uh, the film industry, you know, the game industry. I think I'd rather be more solo. Similar to right now, the only kind of artists, the, the kind of lifestyle I want to live is where I can work obviously from home, be more independent. But like a lot of digital artists, basically. You know, having a strong, strong, having a strong like membership because that's how people usually do it. And it's more consistent. You kind of have an income in that sense. Having a couple of products to sell, courses, because that's always a good thing, you know. Um, and obviously YouTube, I want to make this kind of, um, you know, generate some ad revenue because it does help as well. And I think nowadays you need to learn how to be able to monetize yourself. Um... And I think we can't be so tight with how we think we should make money. Um, just try and go online and find artists. And of oftentimes you'll find they make money in different ways. Sometimes they do merchandise. Sometimes they do like sponsorships. Meeting up with or kind of partnering with brands and such. Um, being content creators. Like there's so many ways, so many avenues to generate income with your art and i think this is something that yeah i think this is something we have to be more open about i was i'm listening to this channel it's a um a minecraft channel be, um initially but i think this guy i think the channel name is flow space or flow state or something interesting channel i'm not really into the whole minecraft thing or games in general i mean i i don't play i'm not a gamer basically i just like seeing the games or the the art but I think it's very open with being, um, or that's kind of, I think it's trying to focus on YouTube and trying to be, trying to be like a big content creator in this space. And, um, he has a podcast also, and he talks with different people, usually around, you know, our age, kind of like under 30, uh, late teens, kind of in that range. 
And I'm, I'm very happy seeing all of these people trying to find their way because I'm kind of doing the same thing. Even though I'm not there yet, um, I'm not happy. Well, that, that's not true. I, I haven't figured everything out yet, basically. And uh, I'm, I'm not saying I'm happy that they're struggling, <laughs> but it's just nice seeing. Oh, I, I love these ones. It's it, it, it's just nice seeing that where I don't feel like I'm the only person doing this thing, you know. Uh, and not not all of these people are artists, you know, but they're all trying to find their way, uh, trying to make content, trying to work different jobs that aren't necessarily. Or that, that doesn't involve, that does not involve content creation in any way. But, like, they, ha they have such unique paths and problems that, that are unique to them. And it's interesting the amount of stuff that other people have to go through. Because oftentimes you're so focused into, or in your own life, obviously, that you forget other people are kind of experiencing a similar thing. It may not be exact, but... The struggles you have at the base level is something that other people are experiencing as well. By the way, this guy reminds me a bit of Zach Foreman, another concept artist. I did an art review of the guy, um, so I will also feature his work here. So you'll see here in these um, concept sketches, basically two values, one mid-tone and then one like basically black or dark tone. It's a great way to save time, helps you focus more on the bigger shapes. It's basically one big silhouette, but with some definition with that, or using one value. And it helps you block things. Sometimes you're doing it for, like, adding the darker values for just blocking certain areas. Uh, sometimes it's used for shadow work, trying to show uh, which side is which to add that three-dimensional kind of effect, which I get. I love, I love how these were done especially these suits because it's so minimal like the darker tones lots of negative space or negative space or use of negative space not everything has to be in black and you don't need full line work for these sorts of things i think for zach Foreman, for zach Foreman, the uh i think he does a lot of mech art or concept art mech designs um 2d 3d he does add more line work in his 2D um, concept sketches. I mean, you can see a bit of that here, but it's more shapey. Nice, babe. Yeah, I love this style of rendering or sketching. It saves time and it does have a nice appeal to it. I think he's really into the warmer tones. Lots of like browns or like yellow browns, right? It's just warm, basically. So yeah, I guess that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.